But when I realized this last point that I'm about to share with you, everything changed for me completely. Hey guys, what's going on? Bashar Kitu here. If this is your first time, welcome. Consider subscribing as I drop brand new content about Amazon FBA every single week that you can take and put to work in your business today. Also, if you are returning, welcome back. Consider uh, sharing this video with someone that you feel like would benefit from the content. Now also do me a favor and drop your comments below and let me know what future stuff you'd like to see from me because really your ideas shape the future content of this channel. Now you see, having come from the retail world or really the offline world, we may say, the whole idea of having a virtual business was just a little strange for me. Um, and I say that simply because, you see, up until about 2013, 14, even 15, uh, to me, a business, even like having your own business uh, or having a transaction was literally, it meant to me that like people physically had to be uh, at a location somewhere where they exchanged a service or a product with someone else. And then, you know, the return you received compensation, which would be revenue for your business. So like when I had my own, my restaurant, um, you know, we were providing food and drinks to our customers, right? We had a, an establishment, a brick and mortar. People came in there. We knew who they are. We saw who they are. They saw us in face. Uh, you know, we saw them. We served them. Um, and then we had our regulars and all that stuff. So for me to, to start going to a, an online website uh, that I know nothing about, maybe some even some websites I had never heard of, and, and be able to trust a website and even plan my card and, and put in my information and then hope that this product that I purchased would show up. I, it's just, it was an idea that like, it, it just seemed unreal to me. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you that are watching this right now, maybe, you know, either you were in the same position or maybe you've had other people, uh, spouses, you know, parents, grandparents, uh, especially the older generation, probably even until today, some people are just skeptical, you know? So it's just a, kind of like a, an idea that really had to really evolve over time. Now, I even remember like uh, when I first migrated into the US back in 2006, we were driving by at Best Buy, right? And uh, electronics and uh, it was Thanksgiving, Black Friday. And I would see this long line out the door and I didn't know what was going on. And then I still remember one day I was driving by with my uncle and he, he started explaining to me what was going on. But then over the years, I started seeing those lines just simply get smaller and smaller and smaller with people's shopping habits simply changing from offline and, or retail to online because it's just more convenient and all. So really a lot of my opinions and a lot of my kind of mindset and really just how I look at the world really, uh, not just commerce, but just how I look at everything, how I approach everything has really dramatically changed in the last five years. And over the past you know, uh, year, especially in 2020, uh, it was just, a, the whole year was just had a, a big impact. And it really changed a lot of things for me, you know, because I really started looking at things in a different lens. And I'm pretty sure you have as well. Uh, it was probably like a, like a reality check for you to, to kind of see like, okay, I've, I've been doing this a certain way. And this year kind of just really changed everything for me. So going back and analyzing 2020, we, we, we have a, a couple of days left of the year. I came up with three things that I have realized that really impacted my business and impacted my life that I want to share with you. So uh, for the next few minutes, let's go ahead and get into them right now. Now, before I do that, our uh, weekly giveaway for last week was Farouk Faisal. Um, uh, be sure that you guys are watching these videos so that you see when you are winning to reach out to us so you can get your giveaway. And if you want to be part of this giveaway, all you need to do is drop BJKU in the comment section and we do a giveaway to our uh, free kind of a step-by-step -step guide on how to launch on Amazon. So you see, you know, with the world kind of going in a, in a panic really and, and going in, a, in an uncomfortable uh, situation, you know, it's like, uh, you kind of woke up one day and like wanting to even go visit your parents or visit your relatives or someone is just almost awkward, right? It's like right now we're planning on, you know, traveling to, to uh, the East Coast, going to Michigan, to Detroit. Uh, and that's kind of where we have a lot of our relatives, but we're really little kind of hesitant because it's like, well, how is it exactly going to pan out? You know, because when we go like, you know, I have cousins that I haven't seen in, in, in years, you know, like, I want to hug them. I want to kiss them. How am I going to be able to do that, right? How are they going to feel about that? Like when, when we see a relative or someone 
just out at the mall or when you go somewhere and someone comes to us, it's just like, it's kind of an awkward thing. Like you want to hug them, you want to kiss them and then they want to, you know, so it's the whole thing is, the whole situation is just a little weird, right? So although the world has opened up and some places are closing down and opening up, but it's still a little weird to be out in public, you know, whether if you're at a, at a store buying groceries or trying to go to the gym or trying to go to work, you've got the mask on and people are a little weirded out and, and just the whole situation is just not right. So a lot of people are getting used to the idea of purchasing online. Now, if you don't know who Jeff Bezos is, there's an issue. But you should. So Jeff Bezos is the CEO of Amazon. Uh, either late 2019 or earlier 2020, he got a divorce from his wife. He was worth right around $130 billion. He gave her, I believe, between 30 to $40 billion. So he was probably worth about 80 or 90 billion. Now, from about 80 to 90 billion, he was worth in the beginning of 2020 to where now he is worth nearly $200 billion. So his net worth has completely doubled. Now, he didn't go from 50,000 to 100 or from a million to, to, to 2 million or from even 10 million to two, 20 million. He literally went from almost 100 billion to 200 billion. That's a, a massive jump. And the reason for that is simply because the Amazon stock and Amazon revenues has exponentially exploded in 2020 because everyone is going online. So. The first thing that I have learned is you need to be online, okay? You, your business needs to be online. Your work, your job needs to be online. I don't care what it is that you do. If you are a social worker or if you are a restaurateur, right? If you have a business where you care for pets or uh, maybe you have a business, you're a mechanic. I don't care what you do. Your business has got to go online in a way or another, right? You may say, but Bashar, let's say I'm a mechanic. How in the hell am I going to be online? Well, a couple of very simple things is you need to be advertising online, right? And when I say online, I don't just say, well, you need to have a website where people can buy services, which that actually would make sense because a lot of people are now spending more time online than they are offline, right? So you need to have a website online where people can go and check it out. That's number one. Number two, if you are a mechanic, you could private label your own oils, your own products like uh, windshield wipers, you know, like uh, uh, what is that thing called? The, the thing that you put for the, for the cooler, coolant, I think it's called or something like that. Uh, there's like a million things that I can think about. You can create your own brand and sell physical products on websites like Amazon or create your own website and have an online presence. What that does is that it's going to, number one, you're going to have a simply a revenue stream that, that you wouldn't need to work for, okay? That's pr getting, you know, producing you money on autopilot 24 seven. And number two, through that, you can also have people find you. If you're a restaurateur, you need to be on social media advertising your business, okay? You also need to, you could probably create, like I, I know if I had my pizza restaurant, our ranch dressing and our marinara sauce were great. So one way that I could do it is that I could create my own like packaged uh, bottles and then sell them on our website where people can go online and then buy them and we could ship them simply from our restaurant, right? It's not something that I need to be doing. It's a website, it lives there. When we get an order, we ship it out. And also advertising online is massive. Once again, because people are simply spending more time online than they are other where, you know, other places. And I even see it all the time where people will literally go to the mall, go to Walmart or go to places like Macy's and then they will find something and then they will go back home and buy it on Amazon or buy it on other places, right? Because they know they can trust these websites, they can come, you know, faster and, and it's just a more convenient thing, you know what I mean? So the number one thing is that you need to be virtual in a way or another. Now the second thing is if you have a, a physical product, right, and this is this goes to physical products. I think physical products only if you have a service, it would be a little weird to do it, but you could potentially create a physical product that would translate into a service, right? Like a subscription model, okay? You need to be on Amazon and here's why. You see, when you create a brand new website, right? People don't know who this person is. People are not going to, to this website. Amazon is responsible for over 53% of all online sales, okay? So imagine there are what, hundreds of thousands, millions, maybe even tens of millions of websites, 53% of shopping that happens online, it all happens on Amazon, okay? 53 actually. So 
it, it, people trust the website. People understand that, you know, FBA, people know Prime. People know that you can place an order today, tomorrow, the day after, this product can be delivered to your house. Now, if you have your own website and you're doing your own fulfillment, right? And you get, let's say, 50 orders a day, are you going to be able to actually fulfill these products? And that's kind of something that you really have to be thinking about. Not only is it a, is it a trusted website, but it's also, they offer FBA, which you can ship your thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of units to FBA. They will store for you. They will fulfill for you. They will do customer service for you. They'll do all that for you, leaving you hands off. Like for instance, um, what if I had a restaurant and, and, and let's say I was selling physical products or maybe it's a little weird when it comes to like sauces and stuff like that, although you can buy all that on, uh, on Amazon. But let's say if you sold, if you were a mechanic and then you sold things like windshield wipers and like oils and, and, and like your branded air fresheners and other things I can't really think of, but I'm pretty sure you can come up with a whole bunch of things like socket sets and all this other stuff that, you know, people would use, like other mechanics would use or people that work on their cars would use. You can private label those by simply finding someone in China overseas that manufactures this stuff and then you slap your own logo on them. Your, your manufacturer sends your product directly to Amazon's warehouse, Amazon stores. You launch your product on Amazon. Every time you sell, Amazon takes care of it. You're a mechanic. You're working 10, 12 hours a day. By the time you get home, you're being. Can you imagine you get home, you've got 30 orders they have to fulfill. That's not something you want to do. But you allow Amazon to take care of all that for you, right? So for the convenience, for the fact that their traffic is already there, let's say you have a brand new brand. I am helping currently one of my friends launch my clothing uh, brand, right? Like athletic clothing. And the first things that we were thinking about is that we need to launch on Amazon because eyeballs are on Amazon. If we created our own website, it's great. We can have our own traffic, but then people don't trust us. People don't know who these people are. But if it's on Amazon, the trust is there and that is key, especially when it's virtual, though, when people are not talking to you, they don't know who I'm really buying this stuff with. Like it was like me five, six years ago. I'm gonna put in my card and hope that things show up in my doorstep. So the second thing is you need to be on Amazon. Now, whether you are doing Amazon FBA like I do, or you are just, you know, you have your own products that you're selling online. The beautiful thing about having an online business, especially consumer, direct to consumer, physical products, direct to consumers, is that the growth is massive and then there is no ceiling. And here's what I mean by that. When I had my restaurant, it was in a town of about 45,000 people, right? So, you know, I, there was probably about half a dozen restaurants in that town. I think we were the only or maybe the second, uh, like kind of of its kind, right? Like a, like a pizzeria with a full bar. Uh, it was a, kind of like a country town. So we were the only ones that had like country music and dancing and that kind of stuff, right? So we could potentially have up to 45,000 customers. I mean, obviously they're not all gonna come every day, but you know, those are the people that we're, that we can cater to, right? And then maybe the couple towns, you know, uh, next to us. But then let's say if I was doing, I think the most we did was probably about thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a month in revenue. Could I have gone to 100,000? Probably if I had kept it by now until now and then just kept on improving, probably would have, you know, been able to go to 100,000, which is a million dollar a year business, which is great, right? But then it's like, but how do I go to eight figures? Is that even possible? Probably not. And when I say eight figures, I mean, we're talking about, you know, doing nearly a million dollars a month, essentially. That's about 80 grand a day in revenue. Instead of my restaurant, the restaurant was huge. I mean, we had the, the, the actual area was about, I think four or 5,000 square foot is set on about a half acre uh, land. So there was definitely room, but the problem is we wouldn't be able to cater to so many people because of the location. We would probably be able to grow the company as a whole by opening other locations. Now, the average restaurant costs anywhere between 100,000 to over 500,000. My kind of restaurant to have, you know, to be able to open it in other places closer to half a million dollars to open that. So every time I needed to expand, I needed to have about a half a million dollar investment into the place, not including, you know, needing a full staff, managers, you know, just a million moving parts that went with it and advertising and all that and then need to start from ground zero to simply build the business and grow it. Where with an online business, your customer is simply everyone around the world, right? It could start with everyone in the US or let's say you live in Canada or UK or Germany or whatever, it could be everyone in your country. 
And then from there, you can simply explode to other countries. Like right now, we sell on Amazon. We sell on Amazon.com, which is Amazon USA. Once we find a product that does very well, and it very well is about ten to $20,000 a month in revenue, we launch it in Amazon.ca, which is Canada. And then when you apply for a North American account, you get USA, uh, Canada, and Mexico, right? We don't really do Mexico because we've done Mexico and it just isn't you know much demand there. But we'll do Canada, and usually Canada will give us another probably about 10 to 20% boost in sales, which is great. Would not need to do anything. Same product, same inventory, and then now Amazon has uh, this thing called remote fulfillment with FBA where the same inventory, I actually don't want to go too much in depth in it, but the same inventory that's in Amazon USA warehouses can be shipped to Canada. And then from there, if that goes great, then we go to Germany, then we go to UK. Same product, we're not physically doing anything. Same supplier, shipping units to USA that covers Canada, USA, and Mexico. And then if we want to go to Europe, we simply ship units to Europe, to UK, to Germany, to, to other places, right? Without us physically needing to do anything. There are no brick and mortar uh, places that we need to build. There are no hundreds of thousands of dollars that I need to do. I simply take that money and invest it in a brand new inventory for new products or expanding the same product line. So the room for growth is technically massive and there is literally no ceiling whatsoever. Now guys, I truly hope that you found the, this content that I shared with you in the last few minutes valuable. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing if you haven't before and share this video with someone else that you feel like would benefit from the content. And also be sure to drop your comments below. Let us know what more you'd like to see out of this channel. Um, until next time, there are a couple of videos here. Go ahead and check them out. I feel like you might find them useful. Um, hope to see you in the next video. Have yourselves a great day. Take care.